Hey guys, today I'm doing a review on the Barrett M107 Gen 2 by Snow Wolf. Keep in mind, unlike most of my reviews, this is not a long-term review as, for the most part, AEGs are pretty reliable, so you're not worrying about things breaking nearly as much as GBBs. Okay, so let's get into the overview, and then after that, I'm going to do a pros and cons, and then a shooting test. One thing to note is I do not have these attachments on, but it has a monopod that goes in there. It has a bipod that mounts here, and it also has a carry handle that it comes with that I am not using currently. Also, that is a different muzzle device than what came with it. came with the circular ones, and they were all out of stock of the tank style one. So I 3D printed my own. Yes, I know it's big. Um, I wanted to exaggerate it a little bit. So as far as controls go, it's just like your standard AR-15. Um, with your selector, uh, this does shoot semi and full auto even though it's not marked. And then as for your magazine, you have a paddle style. And the way that Barrett's reload, it's just like an AK where you use the paddle and then it rocks out. And then as far as your hop-up goes, you pull back your charging handle and it's right there with that wheel. Now, something to note, this does use a Gen 2, um, a version 2 gearbox out of, you know, your standard M4, so it is upgradable, which is pretty nice. Also, the iron sights that it comes with are not the best. Um, they're both spring-loaded, and the front is just a post, and the back is a peep sight, which is alright, but, I mean, you're going to be putting a scope on this anyway. I just haven't gotten around to putting a scope on it yet. Okay, so it does have two sling mounts, one here and one at the very back over here. Um, your butt pad is a solid rubber. Um... Everything is metal apart from your AR grip, which is plastic on the externals. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I oh, went possibly the cheek well. But yeah, everything else is metal. It is a pretty heavy replica. So let's get into the pros and cons. There are not a lot of pros on this gun apart from it being upgradable and having full metal externals. Um, also coming with the bipod, the monopod, and the carry handle. Um, and which I've taken them off strictly for weight purposes because the bipod having three extra pounds at the front of the gun is not exactly the best. So, um, I'm trying to make this as lightweight as possible because even though it's not very usable, I'm trying to make it usable. The last pro is probably the, the battery space, which you access the battery by pulling out this pin. And then this whole top section slides off. And make sure your mag's out when you slide off the top section because otherwise it won't come off. But once you have that off, this is all your battery space. And as you can see behind here, it does just have a standard M4 motor and hop-up unit. Um, so that's cool. And also while that's apart, you access your, um, your bipod mounts right here. As well as, I believe you can take this off. I'm not 100%, but I might try that later tonight. And also, one other thing. Where before you put it back together, make sure that this barrel, the, the hop-up unit, is seated correctly in here. There are slots that it goes into. So just make sure it's like that. Oh, and the last pro is that uh, it does have full trades. So if you care about that that's there for you okay so now let's talk about the cons so the first con is just the size and weight of it um this is the 29 inch barrel or the 20 inch barrel version there is also a 29 inch barrel version um the length not including this muzzle brake just up until the uh outer barrel ends which is about right here uh it is 45 inches and that's equivalent to about 114 centimeters. So that is something to keep in mind. Also, the weight, it is fairly evenly balanced. Like if you put the carry handle here, it doesn't really want to tip. 
but when you're actually holding it it does feel front heavy because of how long it is and if you're trying to hold it out here it gets heavy very quickly but um the actual weight itself i weighed it as you see it right now um i'm not 100 percent on my scales accuracy but it said 11 pounds which is around five kilograms um also another complaint that i've heard from a lot of people is this charging handle likes to snap off so that may be something to think about um maybe don't like pull it back and let it slam forward maybe just let it you know slowly close it gently make sure that that doesn't break because i believe they do not sell replacements for that um and then the last con is probably the fact that it performs like an m4 and i think that's what a lot of people that buy these don't understand is it is essentially a high fps m4 it is not super accurate even though it is an anti-material sniper rifle um it's not really designed for that in the airsoft world yes the inner barrel does come to the very end of the outer barrel but um i believe it's 500 millimeters long but it's still it's not the best barrel length doesn't matter that much in airsoft it's more the quality of the bore of the barrel and how clean it is and that sort of thing but yeah another con is actually the trigger um the trigger response isn't the best and it's a pretty long and hard to pull trigger so it's not very easy to spam it i mean you can but it tires out your finger pretty quickly it's not like the micro switch trigger that's on my uh pcc9 the last con is the mags um not only are they big and bulky but they also i believe they only sell high cap mags and i believe this is a 500 ground mag um but yeah, so you're stuck with high caps rattling around if you do end up getting one of these. Now, going along with the fact that this is essentially a big, heavy M4, the FPS is also not the best. It's advertised to shoot 410 to 440 FPS for the U.S. market um, with .2s. So nowhere near sniper limits for here, but... Um, that didn't really matter to me anyway because I'm going to be throwing a wide board barrel in it and uh, trying to get my FPS way down to like around 350 so it is CQB legal uh, because that's what I'm going to be trying to do with this thing. I just I want to use it at my local field and 350 or 380 something like that is their uh, their field limit so hopefully if not then this thing has an HPA engine in the future. Okay so for this shooting test this is longer but it's still an aeg m4 thing so 100 feet away i have a six inch pie pan um six inches the diameter and i'm going to be taking two cider shots and then 10 regular shots to see how many hit and then i'll just do some uh full auto bursts something to note too is on this gun you get about 80 shots before you have to rewind the mag um and also I'm using a 7.4 uh, Titan battery. Also, I'm going to be at a bench rest position. So hopefully it won't move too much. There isn't a ton of wind uh, and I'm using two 5 BBs. Now some full auto bursts. Also here is the trigger pull. So my final thoughts on this gun, um, it is essentially a, co a collector's piece, but if you want a Barrett that you can actually use on the field, this is the one because the only other options are cheap Springers. So, well, and the Springers aren't even that cheap. They're, I, I believe they're around 200 something dollars, but, uh, you know, for double the price, you actually get an AEG, um, you know, I'm going to use it. I'm going to take it to the field. Snow Wolf, 
from what I understand, doesn't have the best reputation. Um, although I am pretty pleased with this gun. It feels pretty good quality. Um, and yeah, I'll make any updates if anything goes wrong. But overall, decent collector's piece. I think I'm going to enjoy it in-game, but it's definitely not going to be something I'm going to be taking out every single time that I play. Such as my uh, High Kappa or my Mark 23. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's video on the Barrett M107, uh, please leave a like and sub, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.